Consumer Confidential now with David Lazarus. Yeah, you're joining us here. Let's talk about uh, WeWork, right? The workspace provider filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, not a huge surprise. Yeah. We reported last week, or at least the Wall Street Journal did, that it seemed to be in the offing. This morning it happened. Now, if you're just coming late to this particular party, WeWork, once upon a time, was the world's most valuable startup company. It was worth $47 billion. How did that happen? Because this was the quintessential story stock. In other words, they were telling a story to investors and investors bought into it. And the story here was that WeWork was going to be an Uber-like, change the world tech enterprise that would reinvent how people do their jobs. And a lot of people immediately started buying up the stocks and getting hot for it. And obviously there was a lot of buzz and then it went public. And then cooler heads prevailed and people realized, no, this isn't an Uber like anything. This is a temp office provider. And that's it. And they had nothing else going on. And then they ran into all sorts of problems with their founder, a guy named Adam Newman. Maybe you saw the, the miniseries on TV. He was really into the whole story stock thing, and he was putting free craft beer into some of his outlets and really trying to pump it up as if it was a big tech company as opposed to a temp office company. He got thrown out on his keister, even though he got one of the biggest golden parachutes in Silicon Valley history. And ever since then, WeWork has been struggling to try to reestablish itself. So with its new Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, it's trying to reorganize billions of dollars in debt. That's going to be a problem. It's also trying to renegotiate leases for office space that it has all over the world. And that's going to be a very heavy lift because not a lot of landlords are going to want to renegotiate that. Here's the key thing here. As a story stock, it only really is storyful as long as you believe the narrative. Once you look past all the buzz and hype, you realize, no, it's just a business, and it's a business that's not making any money. Moreover, this company has lost 99% of its value hmm. since going public. So there's 1% left. I guess they can cling to that as a little life raft. Nevertheless, it's, a, it's an object lesson for all, not just all entrepreneurs out there, but just as importantly for investors to realize when you're told a story about some Something that's going to change the world, make sure they show you how they're going to do it before you buy into the hype. Yeah, I mean, I was fascinated with the WeWork story. I think he walked away from a quick Google search around $700 million he yeah. made when he walked away. But they started getting into different spaces, as you mentioned, trying to make it look more like a tech startup versus right. what it was. Getting into education at one point in New York City and opening up schools and all this. They wanted a WeWork school kind that of That never thing. happened. It, yeah, it was yeah. just, it, it was a very problematic. Not surprised to see it, you know. No, it's completely it goofy. Today. And obviously the pandemic killed off the whole temp office space yeah. market. Yeah. And so now these guys are trying to rebuild after that, but it's hard to see where So would you go. say it was more of the pandemic issue or just an no, organization? They were in trouble before the pandemic, as we saw with Adam Newman. Uh, and then the pandemic hits and basically wipes out commercial real estate. And yeah. here we are. Well, uh, I know our office isn't offering craft beers, but maybe we can get this hot new Thanksgiving item. Well, we're all pretty excited about it. You know, just yesterday we were talking about Heinz rolling out pickle flavored ketchup. And as if that wasn't the big story of the week, now Baskin Robbins is stepping into the goofy food sweepstakes with a Thanksgiving themed ice cream flavor. And wait for it, it's got all the fixins, I'm telling you. Now the thing is in fact called Turkey Day Fixins and it has the taste sensations of sweet potato, spice, actual little pieces of cornbread and swirls of cranberry sauce. And since I posted something about this on our website, ktla.com, I've had plenty of responses from people who said, what are you kidding me? Now, there are a number of people who say, no, I've tasted it, it's good, or I want to taste it, but it still seems like it's a little bit over the top, all things considered. A spokesperson for Baskin Robbins says, quote, we continue to push the boundaries of flavor innovation at Baskin Robbins and wanted to bring a unique scoop to the table that deliciously encapsulates encapsulates all the sweet and savory flavors from your favorite Thanksgiving sides. And if you're thinking to yourself, my goodness, is this the biggest misfire in the company's history? Oh. Au contraire. There's actually a case study out there looking at the history of Baskin Robbins, and it says that Baskin had a lot of failures on its road to greatness, including ketchup ice cream, which our friends at Heinz are no doubt thrilled about, Grape Britain, and my favorite, gummy, gummy, gum drops, in which the ice cream contained hard candy that, according to the case study, broke people's teeth off, which is not something you turn typically to ice cream for, so we'll dub that a failure. Nevertheless, 
points for trying. I think just having you say gummy, gummy, gumdrops on there is just <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, it's, I was, I've waited my whole career for that. So I, I hear that, but Salt and Straw has been doing this forever. <laughs> they have all their weird Thanksgiving series, mm -hmm. uh, the cheesy potato casserole, uh, turkey stuffing and cranberry sauce, and parlor house rolls and salted buttercream. Honestly, Delicious. I, I bet it is delicious. The only difference is probably the price between like where you're going to pay yeah. a basket around. A $12. Dollar a yeah, yeah. Pint. But that, I would try that 100%. I, I would, would try basket around. Yes, I read, I I read once upon a time that the, the least successful flavor in basket around history was Tobacco Road. But I went onto the internet today looking for it and couldn't find it. Oh. So maybe that was a misleading thing. I don't know. <laughs> I still love the idea of Tobacco Road as an ice cream. These weird flavors people like.